There was one moment that changed my entire life. What happened was the great scientist had just died. This was Albert Einstein. I'll never forget, a picture was flashed on the evening news in all the newspapers. It was a picture of his desk. And the caption said something like, this is the unfinished manuscript of the greatest scientist of our time. What was so hard that he could not finish this one problem? And it was the theory of everything. Einstein wanted an equation one inch long that would allow us to, quote, read the mind of God. What could be so hard that the greatest scientists of our life couldn't finish it? So I said to myself, I want to be part of this mission. I want to be part of this grand journey to complete this theory of everything. So when I talk to young people today, I see that same moment, that epiphany, when they buy their first uh, telescope. They get their, their first astronomy book, that, that really energetic glow that they have, saying that, wow, the universe is incredible, it's beautiful. So we're born scientists. We're born scientists until we hit the greatest destroyer of scientists known to science. The greatest destroyer of scientists is junior high school. Every day we lose hundreds of thousands of junior high school kids who think that science is boring, they think that science is useless, memorizing facts and figures they're never going to use again. Saturday mornings, I would watch television. And guess who was on TV? Flash Gordon. Rocket ships, ray guns, invisibility shields. There's a whole world out there, the world of the future. Then a few years later, I began to figure it out. Well, yeah, Flash got all the credit, but he didn't make the series go. Who made the series go was Dr. Zarkov, the scientist. Dr. Zarkov, a great scientist, Your Highness. I have need for a great scientist. He was the one who invented the starship. He invented the invisibility shield. He was the one who kept the whole series going with his inventions. And then I began to realize Dr. Zarkov is a physicist. I didn't know the word. I began to realize that Einstein was a physicist. So you see, physics not only unlocks the secrets of the universe, it also predicts the future. We invented the transistor. We invented the laser. We invented television. We invented the World Wide Web. We created the space program. We created the X-ray machine, radar, radio, television. All of that came from the minds of physicists. So that's what we physicists do. We invent the future. The first question that I always ask every single scientist is, what happened when you were a kid? And they always say the same thing. They always start off with, when I was 10 years old, that's when the magic happened. It was a telescope. It was a microscope. It was a visit to the planetarium. It was seeing the moon for the first time in a telescope. It was a journey that they went into and it changed their life. And even when you're old and elderly and you're a senior scientist, you always go back to that moment. It's like a well. You draw water from that well forever. It energizes you. It activates you because you still remember being a child. And so what is the one psychological test that correlates with success in life? And I found out that it's the marshmallow test. So what is this marshmallow test? You get kids and ask them, do you want a marshmallow now or two marshmallows a few hours from now? And the kids that want the marshmallow now tend to be those that want shortcuts, those that don't want to do the hard work. They want the, the, the quick kill. They grab that marshmallow. But the other ones say, no, wait a minute. If I wait two hours, I can get two marshmallows. I can hold out. There's a pot of gold waiting for me. They're not going to take the shortcut. And so you say to yourself, well, that's a test for kids. But then you track them decade by decade by decade. And then you find out, oh my God, these are the ones who go to college, the ones who hold out for that advanced degree that don't want that simple payoff now, but are going to delay gratification into the future. And so I realized that that's the key to success in life, not just science, but in life. Don't take the shortcuts. When I think about Einstein, he spent the last 30 years of his life chasing after the theory of everything. He spent 10 years of his life chasing after 
what is what we now call relativity. When Einstein was 16 years old, 16 years old, he asked himself a simple question. Can you outrace a light beam? It took him 10 years to solve that problem. When he was 26 years old, he figured it all out. And that was relativity. And that changed the entire world. So talk about a marshmallow. Here's a man who said he's gonna spend 10 years of his life answering a question, can you outrace a light beam? And the answer is no. The speed of light is the ultimate velocity in the universe. Einstein is the cop on the block. So here's a man who really held out for that marshmallow. When Einstein got relativity, he didn't do it using pure mathematics. Um, one of my favorite Einstein quotes is when he talked to children, he said to children, no matter how much difficulty you have with mathematics, mine were worse. So what was it that drove Einstein? It was a picture. He had a picture of himself being 16 years old, running neck and neck with a light beam. What would light look like if you could race right next to it? And then when he got general relativity, he had another picture that is like a trampoline net, gravity being nothing but the bending of space and time as a fabric. But on his third try, that is to get a theory of everything, he failed because he had no picture. And my other favorite Einstein quote is, unless you can explain something to a child as a picture, the theory is probably worthless. We've been around for hundreds of thousands of years, but we never came up with the laws of motion because things bump into each other, there's friction. It's complicated the way things move, but on an ice skating rink, it's pure, it's pristine. All the secondary frictions are eliminated and that's the arena of Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton's three laws of motion are staring you right in the face every time you go ice skating. So I'm not sure if Newton ice skated, but on an ice skating rink, everything is washed clear. You clearly see the physical laws of motion. And that's why when Einstein comes along and goes beyond Isaac Newton, Einstein starts with clocks, rockets, meter sticks, so he starts with things that you can see and touch, a physical picture. And so all great ideas come from a picture. For Newton, it was this arena. You know, Shakespeare said that we're all actors on a stage. We make our entrances and exits. We're all actors on the stage of life. That's the Newtonian idea, that the stage of life is static and we make our entrances and exits. That's the Newtonian idea. Einstein comes along and says, not so fast. The stage is warped. The stage can have trap doors. When you walk along the stage of life, you think there's a force moving you left and right because the stage is uneven. That's the theory of gravity. So all of it can be explained in this very simple arena. Now with strength theory, we think there could be trap doors in the stage of life, wormholes. We think there could be all sorts of bizarre things that don't exist in the ordinary Newtonian idea. And that gets us into cosmology in the Big Bang. So we see that all great ideas come from very simple physical pictures.